Trudeau's wife came out publicly dropping several bombshells about her failed marriage with the prime minister. Behind the cameras, the real Trudeau embarrassingly failed as a partner. With Sophie now unmuzzled, she aired their dirty laundry to capitalize on the split. From allegedly starting another relationship before separating from Trudeau to talking about the lacking prime minister as he fails in several departments in their marriage. It is quite indicative of the man and the personality Trudeau is when even his wife and mother of his three children can't help but run away from him. It is not unexpected with his failures as a prime minister running Canada and Canadians into the ground that his marriage would catch up to him. The question now remains. Will Canadians ever be just as lucky as Trudeau's ex-wife? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we start today's video, take a quick second to subscribe to our US-based channel, Street Politics USA, where we report daily uncensored US news and how the unfolding political landscape can impact Canada. You can find the link in the description below. Justin Trudeau's tenure as Canada's progressive and most successful poster child appears to be unraveling right in front of every hardworking Canadian. The liberal proclaimed picture-perfect prime minister who burst onto the political scene with promises of sunny ways faced a collision of scandals as a result of his ineptitude and general corruption, and as such tarnishing his already minuscule and publicly ridiculed legacy, as well as the Liberal Party's legacy with his association and under his weak, soon-to-be-completely non-existent leadership. But Trudeau's meltdowns and failures are not entirely limited to his day job as a Prime Minister of Canada, because his fairy tale marriage to Sophie Gregoire has also crumbled right around him as he had absolutely no power or say in the matter. The woman who was supposed to humanize Trudeau, raise his mass appeal, charm his voters and bring his image down to earth so that Canadians may empathize with their leader, has walked away from anything to do with Trudeau. After years of strained relations and miscommunications within the not-so-romantic relationship, Sophie Gregoire finally left her husband last summer. And now she is taking to news outlets and countless magazines in a publicity tour for her life memoir, speaking about being trapped with Trudeau in an impossible relationship position and thus needing immediate and meaningful freedom from all this noise. It seems that Miss Sophie Gregoire has finally snapped just like many Canadians have snapped with Trudeau. The only difference is that she has the freedom to get away from him while hardworking Canadians have to stick with him and his liberal cronies for a little while longer. For a man who bills himself as a feminist and a champion of women, Trudeau seems to have badly failed as a husband to understand the needs of his woman. The collapse of their relationship raises further disturbing questions about who the real Justin is behind the cameras. Sophie Gregoire thought that it was time for her to ditch playing the role of the good and honest political wife anymore either, so maybe she's very similar to Trudeau in a way. On her book tour and in media interviews, she has openly discussed her struggles with her ex-husband Trudeau, hinting at his shortcomings as a husband who cares. From the empty promises to the hollow emotional life he gave her, Sophie Gregoire talks about needing Trudeau physically, emotionally and mentally, but Trudeau gave her nothing in return and only focused on his failing political career as a Prime Minister of Canada. Maybe Trudeau should have paid attention to his wife more since at least he would have had a marriage and a love life after he has righteously outed form his corrupt position as a Prime Minister of Canada. Now he is going to end up empty-handed and down in the dumps just like how every hard-working Canadian has suffered from under his and his liberal stooge's thumb. The fact that Sophie Gregoire is capitalizing heavily on their seemingly messy breakup to sell her aggrandizing and self-help books should be tacky and unbecoming of a woman of her stature. Sophie Gregoire going on about needing attention from disgruntled Canadians suggests that she cares more about celebrity than public service. Another point for her similarity with Trudeau. However, her memoir and her statements are still advantageous enough for every Canadian to shine a light on the man Trudeau is when the public is hardly aware. Perhaps it will get us closer to understanding the nature of his troubled and obviously empty mind, or maybe it will just be used as ammo to deliver a much-deserved ridicule to a prime minister that has broken Canada and burdened Canadians with issues they can't even hope to begin to solve. What truly undermined their marriage, you may ask? Is it the stark similarities in ineptitude and uncaring personalities that got them to butt heads with one another? Is it maybe the alleged cheating that took place as Sophie Gregoire rekindled her love with an Ottawa surgeon? Why, why, why? Lots of questions with answers that are crystal clear in front of all us. Answers that are recognizable and underscored by every hard-working Canadian that loves this great nation and frowns upon Trudeau and the Liberals as they tear it apart, piece by piece. Justin Trudeau is a high-profile failure of a leader, and his track record in the political scene should have been an indication to his track record back at home as a family man and as a husband, if his ex-wife's very public outcry is anything to go by. Because Justin Trudeau was not content with making his own personal bubble of a life a complete and utter public embarrassment. It was always aiming to make Canada the world's laughing stock. 
Canada's misplaced global reputation as a progressive utopia is crashing down. Policies pursued by Justin Trudeau's liberal government are increasingly being cited by international media and politicians as examples of progressive overreach. Canada has been a textbook example of what not to do as a country. The Great White North, once lauded as a model of tolerance and good governance, is now portrayed abroad as a complete woke nightmare. This dramatic shift is evident across countless issues ranging from extreme and nonsensical internet regulation under the guise of an online harms act to corrupt drug policy rife within Canada that aimed to decrease addiction and overdoses, but has done the exact opposite of that with streets filled with junkies all over. Time and time again, Canada implemented the most extreme version of experimental progressive ideas and time and time again, it has shown to be rudimentary at best and a wishful concept that fails and causes more issues at worst. The disastrous results are now warning other Western nations away from following the same damning and broken path. Consider the opioid crisis devastating communities across North America for a second and how the Canadian progressives advocated for radical harm reduction policies like supervised injection sites and free heroin. Vancouver became ground zero for these risky experiments. The results speak for themselves. British Columbia still suffers the highest drug overdose death rate on the continent. Handing out free narcotics has fueled a dangerous street-entrenched drug scene. Vancouver's downtown has become an unlivable hellscape of open drug use and petty crime. Other jurisdictions have rightly balked at following Canada's lead on opioid harm reduction. The utter failure to curb overdose deaths or improve public safety is now a warning to the world. Yet Canadian ideologues continue forcing proven failures like safe supply. What about liberals trying to control free speech as Trudeau's government pushed the envelope with Bill C-10 imposing oppressive quotas on online platforms? And the recently tabled online harms bill is an Orwellian nightmare, allowing police to forcibly confine people for life if they are suspected for future hate crimes they haven't committed yet crosses into minority report territory. Even European countries shake their heads at Canada's descent into thought policing. This pattern repeats across progressive policy domains. On the environment, carbon taxes, and clean fuel standards that disproportionately hammer Western provinces leave Canada uncompetitive. Skyrocketing immigration levels and multiculturalism contributed to parallel societies emerging in cities like Surrey, Brampton, and Scarborough. Canada's post-national experiment revealed flaws that other melting pot countries would be reckless to emulate. In all cases, the Trudeau liberals implemented the most radical version of untested ideological policies without consideration for potential downsides. Canadians are now suffering the consequences of this blinkered progressive zealotry, just as much as Trudeau's wife suffered from the consequences of knowing him personally. And just like his disgruntled wife, Canada will soon be separated from the likes of Trudeau and the liberals as they correct course with a more common sense conservative approach. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Canada will ever be free from Trudeau's slimy liberal grips? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.